All right, Professor Cooper here for Regression 2, uh, ICPSR 2020. And uh, this is a quick uh, tutorial on how to estimate a logistic regression in R and produce a predicted probability graph. Uh, all right, so we're going to start with a couple of packages, uh, Tidyverse and LM test. Tidyverse is kind of a do-it-all universe of packages, actually, but it's mostly useful for data transformation visualization. Um, that really undersells it, but that's pretty much what it's for. Uh, then LM test is going to be for our wall test and likelihood ratio test. So you need to install those packages if you don't have them, and then um, activate them slash attach them through the library uh, function. All right. So uh, these are the data. Um, I'm going to call them admit because they're graduate school admissions data. And uh, they're stored at this, um, in this group at UCLA. Uh, they're used all the time in studies on limited dependent variables for classes like this. So um, you, you might see these again. You may have already seen them. Uh, that's quite all right. Uh, they're universal because they're a pretty good example. Uh, so I grab that, it goes right from the source on the web, and then using a glimpse function from tidyverse, and we're going to look at it real fast, oh, oh, sorry, oh, that accidentally ran it, well, you see what it's eventually going to look like here, here's what the, fine, let's do it this way, uh, here, well, here's what the end product is going to be where uh, we get some results like this that shows the predicted probability of admission to graduate school based on GRE score on the x-axis. And then the lines are broken up by how the, uh, what the level of the school is. Right? So the highest group, the elite group, uh, are in green, and the lowest are in the dark blue. And you can see how it works. Your probability of, uh, predicted probability of getting into school goes up as your GRE score goes up and also jumps if you are uh, applying to a school that is less selective. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's what it's going to look like. But let's go through it though. So let's actually kill that plot and pretend it didn't exist. And let's uh, look at the data. Admissions is our dependent variable of 0, 1, binary, GRE, GPA, and the rank of the school. Uh, Glimpse shows you the class of each variable, so integer, 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 and then double, which is a continuous number. You can take decimals. Integers can't take decimals. Um, so that class of object in R like, actually can't take decimals. Uh, OK, so now we're going to run the model. Uh, it is the GLM function, generalized linear model, a dependent variable, tilde, and your input variable. This is similar to LM. Uh, and then you got to call the data. This part is new because we're talking about what family are we in? Are we in exponential family? Are we in binomial family? It's, are we in et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and then in this case with the binomial, you have an extra argument that you could add if you wanted to do like the probit link as opposed to the logit link, link function. Uh, but the default is what we want here. It's the logit, so we're just gonna go with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and show you the summary. Lo and behold, all the variables uh, matter. They're all significant, well above our cutoff value of uh, 1.96 or so, one, uh, basically two. Um, and uh, GRE, GPA, and the rank of the school all have meaningful impacts. The better your GPA, the better your GRE, the more likely you'll be accepted. And with each, you know, remember rank is being compared to the baseline here. The baseline is dropped, so this is level two. Level two 
level three and level four. Each one is uh, more likely to be rejected. The values get a little bit larger and, and actually um, the degree to which they're significantly different from one grows as well. Uh, we've got some stuff on deviance, and then we've also got the AIC, which really is uh, only useful so far that uh, we're comparing models. Uh, lower the better, closer to zero the better. And then we're going to do a wall test and a likelihood ratio test. Each of these is um, a very close cousin to um, the F test in the least squared world. So you're talking about, am I uh, explaining variance and why with this model? Um, and in this case, above um, just an intercept, basically. And both of these say yes. The answer is yes. Um, the F statistic for the uh, uh, for the wall test is. Uh, large and the p-value is small, the chi-squared statistic for the likelihood ratio is large and the p-value is very small. So uh, we are where we want to be. That's good. So now we want to move on to how do we make this interpretable to other people. There's some people that will try to interpret the, the actual logit that the, the link function transforms x beta into units of logit. Um, or people may do log odds or odds ratios. Uh, let's let's not do that because that's uh, that will be intuitive to uh, some people, but it, more than often than not, it will not be intuitive to at least a few people in the room. Maybe a lot of people in the room. However. Predicted probability is a thing that everybody can speak. It's like music. It's a, it's, it's a probability is a language that a lot of people can speak and intuitively it makes sense. So let us ignore all the nonsense about uh, logits and odds ratios and let's get right into predicted probabilities. We can do this pretty quickly with the predict function. This will be in sample in this case. Um, but we're going to do an out of sample prediction as well. Uh, we need to add this type equals response if we want the predicted probability and not the prediction in the logit. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the end of the data set and so you can see it. So you can see the in sample predictions alongside the actual values from the data. Okay? So admit um, this pipe comes from uh, tidyverse, so does the mutate function. It just means make a new variable add to the end of the data set. We're going to call the new variable prediction and then it gets the predict function with the model coefficients, standard errors, etc. And then we want type equals response so we get predicted probability. I'm going to run this and then I'm going to show you. Uh, and you can see in addition to the regular data set we now have predictions which is good. Uh, and you can see just for example the first observation that person did not get in, their GRA score was less than stellar, their GPA was all right, and then they applied to a rank three out of four school, so a relatively highly ranked school, and they did not get in. Well, the predicted probability is 0.17 and change, which means that you would predict a zero if you were breaking towards zero or one, and uh, it, you know, so it fits pretty well. And then you can go through and look at the rest. Um, so let's, let's think more uh, theoretically and more uh, generically, I, I suppose, and talk about how we would make an out-of-sample um, predicted probability plot, meaning like we could um, create a fictitious world and say um, let GRE range across a, a bunch of values and then pin the other variables at reasonable values and see what happens to the prediction. Well, we can do that. We can just simulate the data, and it's not very difficult. Okay. 
um, I'm actually going to normally, if you were doing like a one shot like this, you would say pin all the variables except for one and let it range across reasonable values. Um, but in this case, I'm actually going to do two, let two values range because in the plot, I want to have, I want to do more than one of these at once. So in essence, what I'm doing is I'm saying um, we're going to let GRE range and we're going to let the rank of the school range, but we're not going to let GPA range. Okay, so GPA is going to be set at its mean. GRE is going to range from 200 to 800, which is the reasonable sort of minimum and maximum. And uh, we're going to make it uh, the same size as the real data set, 400 observations total. So um, rank is going to be 1 to 4, and each is going to be 100 times. Um, and I make it a factor again so that it is not a continuous variable or an integer. I want it to be an actual factor or an actual um, categorical variable for sure. So I create it and let's look at it. And here's what the simulated data looked like. GRE, uh, GPA, and rank. And uh, if we went off the page to the right, you would see that it would then um, cycle over to the twos and rank and then the threes and then the fours.